What's up guys? Tim Halstead here for episode 13 of Tearing Down the Old Cleveland and putting her back together. I'm here at the machine shop today, kind of give you a recap of where we're at. Uh, I got the motor all tore down, uh, power washed it, I chamfered all the oil holes. Um, one thing I learned from, uh, I got to give credit to Steve Kinzel, he's the one that kind of told me about it and my buddies from Australia. Brad Leslie said something about it, Paul Diley said something about it. And that's chamfering the main caps here. You can see there's some fretting here, and that could be just because it's walking and the piston's hitting the crank. But it's hard to see, but you can see where I chamfered the holes here. And I guess the theory is it allows it to grip the stud better and clamp better with a better force. So that's, that's my plan. I took care of that, we washed the caps. I just did some clearance checking, and it looks like the mains, I'm gonna have Don Rohde here take a peek at it, but what I come up with is about 2,000 span, which seems way too tight. But I'll get a better idea and I'll add to this when he comes and measures he's doing with the customer right now. I've got a bunch of emails on the cam that I run. So I run a bullet cam. Um, Jeff from Modern Silver Head is the one that originally designed the cam, which I'm thinking about putting in here, which is the same cam I'm using, except for the lift on the current cam is 744 and the new cam is 790. Otherwise, it's exactly the same cam. So I think with the airflow, with the heads that I'm gonna increase with in regards to the Derek Morgan flowing them and porting them, I think that'll be a big difference. It may pick up something. What he said, Darren Morgan told me, he said, don't go rushing into the cam yet. Let me look at these heads and we'll see if we can work with them. So I think I got two thousandths on the mains, but we'll correct that and check. We're gonna check the rods next. Um, I'm gonna fit the winded tray on here too, since I've never had one or ran one. And that's where we're at. So let me get back to the cam. So the cam's a, a bullet cam. It's 273. 283 duration at 050, it's on a 109, and I have it in at 107. You know Cleveland's, if you want to make power, you need to have a tight intake center line, man. 107, 106, 105. Sometimes people even have them into 101 and 102. Never had a motor like that. Um, the lift on that current cam is 744, 727. So the other cam is exactly the same, and that's what I'm thinking about putting in here. We'll have the chief take a peek at it and see what he thinks about the pistons in regards to clearances. I sent them off today to Calico to get thermal coating on the top and then add two thousandths to the skirt since this bore overall is about 403233 what we got. And that will tighten it up. It'll be good to go. You know, it's not a pro stock motor, but I'm learning some good little uh, or super stock motor, I'm learning some good little tricks on it. And it's good to work with someone that's got some experience, things I didn't think about. I've almost been thinking about putting in a standard oil pump, but I haven't gotten to that point yet. It's hard to change, teach a new dog old tricks. Right, Don? Yeah. How much do you think it's got? I think it's got about two thousandths, looking at that. So, let me shut this off and I'll show you. So, we'll see how that new cam works, if, it, if it'll fit in here, if it's going to be advantageous and, and pick up some power. And I've had it since 2006. I ran it on one combination. People have asked me about combinations I've ran. And I initially started with a 377 with iron 4V heads and got a 1095 out of that um, with a 3,500 pound car. And then I just kept chipping away at the 60 foot and at the engine combinations. Then I went to the same motor that I put on the A3 heads that I currently run. And since then I've only ran the aluminum A3 heads uh, with a Ford Motorsport intake. And I've had 383 was another combination. Um, I ended up dropping a valve on that. It's been and that cam that I'm talking about was going to be or did go in that motor. It's been so long I, I can't remember exactly if what the times were with that. I want to say 10 40. I just don't remember. I don't want to say that until I figure that part out. But I ended up dropping a valve at seven grand and then I went to a 385 which was the best motor I ever had. And after I dropped that valve, I switched to a different builder and um, that guy is the one that knows Glidden and bought his EXP. But he's, I talked to him the other day on the phone and he's 76 
it's just he can't do motors like he used to. He can't lift the cranks and the heads, and you know he's old. He just can't do it. Uh, but he does put her around in there, and he's building a um, a Latham supercharged motor for a Ford truck. Uh, we were talking about that. But Don here, he's he's 71, so he's still cranking out <laughs> engines here with the 440 block without even thinking about it. But, like I said, we're going to try to get the windage tray fitted. The pistons are going to be there. Hopefully they'll be back in the next week or so, two weeks. I've got new rods from Tim Meyer. I'm going with a molar offset rod, and I'm going to have those metal waxed. And that's where you put them on a vibration table and they treat them. I've read stuff, and he's told me about people that have used it, especially circle track motors. Somehow it changes the grain of the material, of the, of the steel. So they don't fatigue as easy. You know, I'm all about trying to try little tricks like that. Um, and we'll see how those rods fit. They weigh 620 grams, and then the rod that I just took out of here, the scat rods, those were 629. So we'll, we may have to mess around with the balance, but maybe not. We'll see how all that works out when the time comes. Um, so back to cams. You know, I've, I've run a few cop cams and, and bullet cams. I think I've had the best luck with the bullet cams. I've talked to uh, Mark at Bullet. That's who I dealt with. Great guy. And I used to talk to Chris Mays at Cop Cams, and that's how I, I met him through Jeff Kobliski at Modern Silverhead. But I just, after I switched builders and, and kind of got in with uh, different setup in regards to opinions on camshaft, I kind of switched over to Bullet, and they've been quite helpful. So, in regards to lifters, for this block, I use the Crane or the Super Pro. I'll think of that in a minute. Ultra Pro, that's what it is. The Ultra Pro lifters. They're a $700 set of lifters, but man, you know, I've never had problems with them. Um, I've had issues with comp cams, roller lifters. So once you get a product that works well, you kind of stick with it. And that's kind of how I've worked with my building of motors. I find something that works, like I said, about a million times through these videos, I stay with it. It makes a big difference, man. Continuity, it's just like in healthcare, continuity in healthcare. You want to keep the same providers if you can, because they know you, they know what's going on. It's easier that way. Uh, I think the same is about builders. You know, I talked about finding someone that's going to help you. And I've kind of learned that this is a dying art. You know, there's not a ton of people that get into wanting to be a machinist and build racing motors. Up, guys, Tim Halstead here. So here's where we're at now, kind of give you a rundown. This morning what we did is I put all the main caps back on, kind of centered them the way we should, I put the girdle back on and torqued them down. And then we measured it to see where we're at because when I measured the clearance for the main bearings, they're about 22 to 25. That's just a little tight for me. I'm, I'm, I like three on the mains, but you know what? It's been running like this and doing okay, so I'm gonna try not to change it too much. And what we're gonna do is just run it through the line home, take off about a thousandths at the most, then my clearance will be right where I need it to be, what I like to do. You know, I've been debating on whether I wanna run a high volume oil pump, like I've been doing for 37 years or go to a standard, but I don't know. I, I just don't want to mess around with success. I just want to get this motor back together, pull off a 950, and be done. So, we talked about the main girdles. A lot of people aren't into them. If you put them on right, though, I think they make a difference. Not just hold the parts in there, I think they add to the integrity of the block and rigidity, along with filling the block up to the bottom of the water pump holes and screwing plugs on the sides. You know, I've been doing that for pretty much the last three or four motors. Maybe more, but it's at least the filling part. <clears throat> like I said, you got to use what works for you. If you ain't into the ring girl, don't use it. You know, but at this point, I'm using it. The track boss will have none of this business with the oil dealings or oil insufficiency, I should say, or inadequacy. You know, the new track boss won't have any of these issues. Won't need a main girdle. Won't need to mess around with the oiling system. It's going to have priority main oiling. It makes a big difference. Um, not messing around. With all the uh, intricacies on a stock block to, to keep it alive once you get past 7,500. You know, running around the street, I would still half fill it. That's just how I do it. You know, I want those rings to not be moving around or that block moving around. You know, 
do they get hot? I don't know. I haven't had any real issues with them. You know, everything's gonna run a little hot this summer in our traffic, but never had it boil over where the thing's boiling over. You know, it might get 200 in traffic, but I'm not driving in interstates and driving through Chicago, I'm just running around town. So, use what you think can work in your program. But if you're going over 580 horse with a Cleveland, you better have it filled. That's my, this is my opinion. So think about that. Um, like I said yesterday, um, I told you about my cam. The crankshaft I have is a, yeah, I think it's a Scott crank. I actually got my rotating assembly neutral balance from Mark McEwen way back when. Won't get into any of that. Um, but I think it's a scat rod and scat crank. And then it's cut down on the counterweights for internal balance, which is which is cool. You know, I think Tim Meyer's doing the same thing now, cutting it down so you don't need the Mallory metal. Um, this has the cam bearings that are restrictive. They seem to work well, rather than the plugs in the mains like the Roush kit. So I'm kind of stick with that. It's worked, and I'm not going to have any issues with that. I started to mock up the windage tray, but I think we're going to line hone it now first before I go and put this on, because I do have to cut just the three studs here, a couple threads. But that's going to make a big difference as long as it clears rotating-wise. Um, I'll be pretty happy. I know that's going to make a difference keeping the oil down in the pan. The windage is such a loss and I've been giving up for years just because I they didn't have this when I wanted to do it and that was 2000 and I never bothered messing with it after that. So, so here we are in the line hole machine. You can see how it's set up here. I'll kind of zoom in. I got the main girdle on and torqued. You can see that. So this is going to give us the bearing clearance we want because I still think it's a little bit tight, but he says that they run all the time, 22 to 2,500, no, I should say 2.2 to two and a half thousand, so no issues. Um, but there again, this is a Cleveland, you know, they got that inherent inadequacy of the oil aspect, so you, you put it together with works and, and see what happens. So that's what we're doing. It's a lot of work to be putting this thing in and then you have to retorque everything and put that girdle on and but it's those little but it's the little things that make a difference in any motor it doesn't have to be a cleveland it could be any small block chevy mopar amc whatever do a good program on your engine and whatever you're building and attention to detail and the results will pay off in the end so i'm pretty pumped right now and psyched about this whole situation and once we get this done, I'll be pretty much waiting for the pistons to come back and the heads from Darren Morgan. So stay tuned.